Okay, let's get started. It is 4.20 in my watch. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Dagdag. I am from, uh, I used to live in the Philippines. Uh, now I live in Texas, USA. And um, today I will be talking about exploring the land of Internet of Things, IoT, on Azure. All right, let's get started. You ready? Yes. Okay. So there's Internet of Things, there's mixed reality, and then there's machine learning. That's me. I like talking about all these different things or all these different topic. Uh, mostly, what can we do with machine learning, how we can combine it with Internet of Things, and mixed reality. And I see the future going towards that like not, you know, our phones can be moved into a lot of, you know, our, a lot of these devices that are surrounding us would be somehow going to change with the AI, Internet of Things, and mixed reality. All right, so I challenge my, my daughter. This is my daughter. Uh, she was three years old uh, growing up, and... <laughs> She enjoys Legos. You know, you're familiar with the Legos? Who among here have played with Legos and have kids have played? Everyone here have played Legos at some point in their lives. So I challenged her because I wanted to, to kind of say, build me a house. You know, from, and we were at a conference. There's a Lego conference in Dallas uh, where, I, where I was. And we built, you know, she built this house. I didn't help her. And it does look like a house. I mean, it does not have a door. It's more like a patio or, you know, it's more like a, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm a proud daddy. I, <laughs> it is a house for me, yes. But a few years later, um, I, you know, I bought her, she, she grew up a little bit. And now, she, you know, I bought her a different kind of Lego. It's better and it's, you know, it is simple, right? It, you instruct someone, build this Lego or this, build this house as compared to this one, right? You, it is a kit. It's out of the box. It's simpler to build, right? Would you agree? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, it's simpler to build uh, Lego if you have instructions. And it would look like a house. But I, I still like this one than the other one because, because I, I love my daughter. <laughs> Okay, today we will be talking about Internet of Things, and then I'll talk about what is it in Azure, and there's this, uh, Azure has this IoT Central, and what would be the benefit of using IoT Central to start learning about Internet of Things. We'll talk about a little bit about device template, Internet of uh, Things, IoT plug and play, how do you visualize the data, and how do you integrate it. Who among here are uh, background with Internet of Things or have played with Internet of Things in the past? We got two people, so that's good. A lot of these is new uh, to, to us. And I am gonna focus on the cloud side. Who among here are cloud developers rather than the device developers or, or app developers? So mostly cloud or have background with the cloud? A little bit, so I'm trying to, uh, to get through it, okay? Learning something new. Okay, so what is Internet of Things? Internet of Things, you know, where there's things, you have data from those things, right? Things are, can be a device or, you know, flights or uh, anything that has sensors, right? And then you send the data to the cloud and then use that data to transform your business. Tra use that data to say, uh, give you more insights or give you more uh, capabilities to your business. So what is Internet of Things? It's the connecting of inter the, you know, Internet to physical world via sensors. The first Internet of Things device is actually built back in 1980s at Carnegie Mellon University. It was like a vending machine that reports contents through the network. You know, so that's where it got started. It was coined by Ke Kevin Ashton back in 19, 
99, and the, the phrase is any device that can interact with physical world around it. So most likely if you've heard of uh, Alexa devices, anyone have heard of that one? Yeah, there, or Google Home or some of the phones, yeah. There's sensors that you can connect to. That is considered Internet of Things. So there are two goals whenever you build an Internet of Things uh, application. One is you want to remotely monitor a device, where that's when you're gathering the data, making sure that you can process. You know, sometimes you can process the data uh, uh, on the device and knowing the status, what's going on. And then the other side is you want to control that device. You know, turning it on and off, you know, being able to say, hey, uh, you know, Siri or hey, Google, can you turn off this device, those commands, and then send that and route that through that device and then be able to set the device properties. So those are the two main goals. Typically, when you want to start development out of this, you have two choices, you know, you have Arduinos, Arduino devices, and then Raspberry Pi. Anyone heard of Raspberry Pis before? Oh, a lot of people. So that's, and have you used it, like played with it? It's the best place to use uh, to, to learn Linux, right? Because it's, uh, so it's, it's an easier way to, to get started. Of course, Arduinos, you know, is a micro controller versus a microprocessor, right? So a uh, Raspberry Pi, it runs with an OS, a full operating system. An Arduino needs a microcontroller. Uh, it does not have, have an, its own operating system. And of course, you know, you can deploy these devices into lots of different places in your you know, factory or different area of the, uh, on retail shops or your business. And then you, you have to kind of coordinate all these devices that are out there. So what is an attribute or the different attributes of a successful Internet of Things solution? One of the things you have to consider is scale. It's not just one device you're building. You know, whenever you got your first Raspberry Pi, that's the only thing you're working on. When you're working with an IoT solution, you have to think about how you're going to store that massive data, where you're going to put that compute, the networking side, you're going to might have customers and may be multi-tenancy, multiple users, right? Different households. Those are the things you have to think about. Device management. Each one of these devices can, you know, you have to provision them, have their own connection to the cloud. And then how do you update the software that runs on that device? And you also have to think about the data management side, the big data management. So data that's coming in, you know, that you're collecting data from these sensors, and there's, also, there's a hot path, that means real-time analytics, a warm path, and then the cold path. So cold path is you dump it in a, a storage and eventually you build reports based from those data that you collected. Analytics also, you have to think about uh, analytics, insights, and extensibility rules, building out the rules to say if this device is acting up, let me know, you know, alerts, uh, automate those actions, how do you integrate it with other systems in the cloud. There's also high availability and disaster recovery because some of these devices can be deployed in hospitals, so does, you know, does your solution provide uh, resilient, resiliency? And then security. Of course, these devices can be deployed in somewhere where it can be stolen, right? So, uh, and it, it is, is it also compliant? Meaning, you know, that, that it has the data protection that is needed, especially if you are in, in EU, right? Uh, then the managing of these IoT solutions. Can you put DevOps around these IoT solutions? So it's not just DevOps on the cloud side, but also on these edge devices. Sometimes we call it uh, these, these devices uh, the edge, right? And then, is it too expensive 
to, pr to produce, right? Those are the things you have to consider how much does it cost you per device in order to deploy it. All right. So anyone familiar with operational technology or have heard of that term? Operational technologies, if you're, you're in a factory, there's a lot of robots or a lot of computers that is out there. Uh, and operational technology has been there for years and years. And whenever you hear about those, you know, these are SCADA machines, especially if, if you're in a, uh, you know, like a oil rigs will have those systems, the control systems that uses to, to be able to do the drilling, uh, you know, different sensors, actuators, you know, even in hospitals, you know, they have, uh, you know, operational technology. Someone actually maintains those devices, right? And then there's IT, which is traditional. We already know a lot of these, right? Of course, there's the cloud side of things, right? So we, we, we make sure that, um, you know, the, the device or the, the cloud side, meaning the you know, software applications that we're running, that's when we talk about, you know, VPN, help desk, all these different things that are available. Internet of Things have to do both, right? You have the, the, the IT side and the operational technology side have to work together in order to accomplish the solution. So there's different roles in order to do uh, in, in IoT. One is the administrator, meaning it, you know, it, it assigns all the user roles and permission and all the administrative tasks involved in setting it up. And then there's the device developer, which is the person that writes code that runs on these IoT devices. Uh, sometimes they're called firmware engineers, but they are considered software developers. A lot of them are, you know, may know about C++, or some of them, you know, if you're doing it on Raspberry Pi, it might be, you know, you can run Python on these, or you can run JavaScript, and you can, uh, so you can, you can um, be able to create those um, devices. And then the operator side. So remember about uh, operational technology. So uh, the operator is the one that manages the connection to the cloud uh, and making sure that they're, they're running. And then the solution builder, which is what I'm gonna be focusing today, is to build it, the IoT cloud solution, the cloud side of, now that you collected data from these devices to the cloud, what are you gonna do, right? What are we gonna do about it and set them up? Okay, so that's when we started talking about this IoT Central. In Azure, there is um, Azure IoT Central that, connect, that can connect, monitor, and manage IoT assets. The, the, the keyword here is at scale, right? Because it's easy enough to do a you know, proof of concept of the IoT devices, but once you have thousands of them or millions of them, there's, a, you know, there's that step that, you need, that is involved in order to, to scale up. So there's the quick connectivity, the visualization and analysis, centralized management, and then the, it is the bridge between the business application and then your IoT data. So in order to leverage Azure IoT Central, there's four things you have to, to think about. You know, how do you collect the data? How do you monitor these devices? And then analyze the data that's coming out from these devices, and then you decide where do you send these data uh, to uh, the cloud? Or what other parts of your system you're integrating it to? So IoT Central allows you to uh, have your devices, manage it, acquire, connect, and secure it, it helps you on that. And then this is where you set up our part where we use the IoT data and what can we do with that. With that. So today I'm gonna to be focusing how do you set up these devices to be able to send it out from IoT Central. So what are the benefits? It's low code. A lot of it is configuration, uh, fast and easy way, uh, ready to use templates and device measurements, and then uh, you can secure an authorize, authorization, and it has uh, authorization and authentication already uh, into that. Okay, so 
Anyone familiar with infrastructure as a service, right? A lot of it is you know, VM in the cloud. And then there's platform as a service. And then software as a service, think about that as like office.com or you know, some, some sort of application services. There is an application-focused software development services, which is uh, in between platform as a service and software as a service. So something that you would, so IoT Central is something that you can configure that is considered platform as a service, but it's application focused platform as a service. And I'll talk more about that. So it's the same way as the, this Lego box. It comes out of the box. It gives you instructions how to put them together. It doesn't stop you from customizing it, adding a little bit of, of uh, information about it. And so, it gives us instruction and makes it easier for us rather than starting from, from scratch. So IoT Central in terms of the architecture itself, you know, IoT in Azure, there's a lot of services that is available to put them together. Uh, but it kind of combines, because a lot of us most likely have not, you know, have experience working with Internet of Things. So there's, you know, there's that part where you receive data from IoT Hub, but in between, it's already taking care of how do you do the warm path, the cold path, uh, also how you would con connect the devices to uh, IoT Central. And then, of course, going out of it, you know, how do you export the data where you can export it to different services, uh, what are the trigger alerts, and then how do you query that data. So as a developer, those are things you have to consider what makes it easier to put together. So when should you use IoT Central? If you have a team and they have to, uh, you know, your task to build an Internet of Things application, but they, we, you know, they have lack of skills and experience, which is very common. Like, you know, a lot of people are not familiar with it. And so you have to consider that, and it makes sense to start from this, and then if you need more customization, you know, changing it, you can actually build companion app. You know, you can have an app on the phone that controls IoT Central and has APIs to be able to use it as your backend. Um, of course, you know, there's also Azure IoT Hub that sometimes can be a better option, especially if your team have experienced professional that uh, wants full control over their Internet of Things solution. All right, so anyone used Windows here or have used Windows in the past? And what <laughs> most likely is, <laughs> or moved on to other operating system? What made Windows successful is that because of all these, you know, you think about the computer, how many components, how many, uh, different, you know, the battery, the disk drive, how they work together in order to build the whole device. I remember when I first got my computer, I had to, you know, build it from scratch. You know, you can order your GPU, you can order your hard drive, and suddenly they all work together with the right operating system, right? And magically happens. Doesn't work all the time. I know we had some, <laughs> we, you know, you had problems with it. And the same way as these Alexa devices, whenever you have them at home, you know, you, you can buy door locks, you have cameras, plugs that you can control your home. And uh, IoT, Azure IoT has a plug and play option where it has some smart devices that is available out there without configuration. It has device models to create the templates for you. So it, it reduces the, the uh, steps involved to select, okay, I need this to my system what are the components out there that is available? What are the sensors out there? So there's an Azure certified device catalog that you can look at. Okay, these are available, these are certified. I can just plug that in if, you, if I don't, you know, if I don't have a former engineer running or if you, or, or in my team, or maybe I can just start with that sensor and it's already certified uh, to work with IT Central. So that, those are the first thing to look at whenever you, you, there's a need for it. So there, there are nine things that I'm going to be talking about today, how you would set up the internet of, internet of things, right? So one is the device type, uh, device template, 
And then we talk about provisioning. How do you monitor these devices? How do we visualize this data? Jobs, data export, rules, REST API. I know it's a lot of topic, a lot of things that I will be talking about, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through this. Okay, device type. So whenever you're building an IoT device or you're setting up, you have to know what type of device it's gonna be. So there's three types that you can connect. You can, it can be an IoT device, an edge device, or a gateway device. Uh, typically, a lot of these items, so I have one here um, in, with me, the camera. Oh. Let's see. So this is an IoT device that I have that I will be demoing today. And that is a freestanding device. It connects to the internet. It sends telemetry data and properties, and it receives writable property values. And then there's edge devices. Uh, you can consider a Raspberry Pi can be considered an edge device that connects directly to the, you know, it can connect to the internet, but it's, uh, it's a standalone device you can run. It has an operating system. It can be a middleman. Uh, a gateway device is, um, is something that you can connect other devices to. So for example, you have a large gateway that has a Linux operating system, and that's the only one that connects to the internet, and then other devices, IoT devices, can connect through the gateway device. So those are the different types. Typically, I'd say most of the time, it's either an IoT device or an edge device that you would connect to. So an IoT And then you have to think about how would you connect to the internet? What's the protocol and, um, and how it would, it would connect to that device to the, the internet? I'm not gonna talk about this because there's different protocols that you can use. The easiest way, most common one is MQTT. So the next step is the device template, meaning that's the blueprint or that tells you uh, what are the data that I would be receiving and how am I going to receive it? So the data that I could be receiving could be a telemetry data. So it's sending uh, what the device sends to the cloud. It could be properties. Some, if you heard about device twins, how do you synchronize the cloud to the device? So there's some properties that you want to make sure that they're the same. And then there's commands. Commands would be something that I'd say from the cloud send a, uh, uh, a call to that device. I can say reboot this device, right? So let's talk about provisioning. You know, of course, every time I hear provisioning, it's like, can your system add one more thing and then one more thing? And the good thing about IoT Central is that it can handle about a million devices before it would tip over, <laughs> that you would need more, you know, more, uh, more scaling. So, okay, so on the provisioning side, um, let's see if I can get to IoT Central just to uh, show you how you create that in, um, in Azure. So if it requires you to have uh, Azure subscription in order to do this. And let's see if I can connect. It looks like I don't have my internet connection here. Okay, we'll make sure I, I can connect. For some reason the Wi-Fi is a little bit slow over here. So you can create an app. Uh, if you go to apps.azureiotcentral.com, you can create one, a new application, um, you know, in order to send some data. Um, the good thing about this is there's different um, options and how you can you can manage, you can click on this build app, and then you can create your own custom application. But there's already like predefined one. So if let's say you have a project related to healthcare, it might make sense to kind of check these and also some instructions around that. You might need to learn uh, a little bit there. But what I did today is to create these, you know, I created the app um, and then 
there's two free, um, in terms of the pricing plan, there's two free devices that are available, then you can connect to it and all that. So I already created one. Um, so in here, uh, simple, I call it simpler way. So once you, you create one, you can, you know, it already gives you a way to add users, you know, add different roles for these users. There's also a way to customize a little bit about this application. You can change the icons, you know, kind of, it, so it's a, it's a application focused platform or service. So, you know, it, it, it's more configuring it, making sure that, uh, you know, that the data that you have here, you can, you can do a little bit of customization and, uh, and user permission. So in order to create a new device, you, you know, once it is uh, set up, you can click on new, and then you go through the device name, the device ID, and what type of device is it. Um, let's go back to my screen right here so we don't have to spend a lot of time there. So to provision it, you create, uh, like in this case, I'm calling it sample device, and then once I create it, each one of these devices will have their own connection string. So in case that device gets compromised, the whole thing does not get compromised. Um, so that makes it more secure. So it does get registered. And then it will give you a, a primary key uh, connecting to that using the shared access key. There's different ways on how you would connect, but I find out that it's easier to use the, the shared access key. All right, so that once you have your device uh, provisioned, get, get it connected to the internet, now you want to start monitoring these devices. Um, so there's a way you can monitor it. There's in, in Azure IoT Central, there's device monitoring side and then the application monitoring side. Devi the application monitoring, the same way as in the, any Azure uh, services that you have, you can uh, have the metrics, you, you go through, I Azure IoT portal to, in order to, to do the monitoring of it. You, you can also um, call REST APIs to know what's going on there. There's also, you can also use Azure CLI. On the device monitoring side, uh, there's, uh, that's when we talk about the, you know, what's going on uh, with that device. So let's see if I can go through this, okay. So I already have a device here that I can, um, I, I already provisioned, it's sending data. Uh, notice how I can kind of see what's, what's going on with my device because um, I set up the monitoring so I can see the temperature, humidity, light, pressure of the, this device right here. Yeah, so it give me, gives me some data, it's, send, it's sending it every, few seconds, so there's a way you can do that. You, I can also send command to say toggle or display some text from, you know, from, from the cloud into my device here. Okay. So that's one way, you, there's a way you can, you can configure the, that data on how you would monitor it there's a way you can also visualize the data. You have to think about how you visualize it. Meaning, uh, you know, you, you can have the data exploration side where you can kind of identify what's going on with my devices here. Like in this case, I can monitor what telemetry data that's coming in and, you know, what, what are the things that is, you know, the values. Or you can kind of build your own dashboard too. So you have you build your dashboard where you can identify, you know, what's going on with my devices out there. Let's see where my dashboard. Yeah, so in this case, I'm looking at the temperature, the data that's, oh, sorry. Yeah, so that's my temperature data that's coming through. Or you can do the data exploration side. 
So in order to do this, there's what we call the device templates, like what I was uh, talking about. On the device template, you can identify, okay, what are the data that I need to define, right? The data that's coming from the device and what's going to be received in the cloud. In this case, I have the temperature data uh, that's being sent, and it's what is the schema is I'm using double and then social, so defini defining each one of these uh, capabilities so that it can be visualized properly. Jobs, jobs, you know, if you think about uh, if you have a thousands of these devices, how are you gonna be able to do bulk updates? Let's say if you have the temperature sensor or the, the you know, the, uh, let's say you wanted to set up these devices to where they can, it's temperature control and you specify certain number of uh, items or updates to those devices. Um, you can use jobs in order to run the command and then make sure that they would run properly. So how you would do that, so in IoT Central you can actually run five concurrent job execution at the same time. So, so how you would create a job, you specify the name, then you specify what, like in this case I'm gonna type a command, I'm gonna send a command, I'm gonna display this text, hello world, and then you can even create batches. Let's say, uh, you know, if, if you're updating a thousands of these devices, how are you going to be able to uh, to batch them? Not all of them at the same time. And sometimes you can say, if ten of them are failing, you can cancel the whole job, right? So, you know, so this would send it, and then you can even schedule it, what time they're going to start or what time they're going to end, and then it would tell you. A, the, the status of it, is it completed? So without any programming. So those are jobs. So extending IoT Central, which is a way for us to export the data coming from here, uh, then the rules, and then the REST API. So how you would do that, uh, you can extend it through Webhook, Automate, Azure Monitor, you can put them on a blob storage or event store or event hub, service bus, or some custom application. So let's start with, um, you know, talking about data export and different ways and how you would do that. I'm going to demo the webhook uh, endpoint. So let's uh, try to work on that one. So on the destination side, you can say, I can create where I'm going to place this. I'm going to call a webhook. And then I would specify if there's authorization required in order to send it to my callback URL. So that means they're going to dump some. <laughs> OK. Is it time to stop? OK, good. <laughs> so we still have a few minutes. So you can send it, and then you can export that data. In this case, the data that I'm sending, I can uh, I can specify what type or filter the, you know, so let's say you have a thousands of these devices, I can filter them accordingly uh, with the device name. And then once I filter them, I can set the destination. In this case, it's going to send it to that URL um, and then send those telemetry values. There's a way you can also transform those values because whenever you're exporting data, some, some of the data that you're receiving from IoT Central, you may not want it as it is. So in this case, you can have a data transformation and you can create, uh, it's using J, uh, it's, it's using this, uh, J, is it JQL or, yeah. So it's using this format in order to uh, convert it to the, the one that I would need. So let me show you that in terms of the data integration. So, I can do the data export side. I can specify the destination. So in this case, I'm sending it to this URL, right? And then on here, I can specify the export. And this export, I'm specifying, okay, I want my devices to export 
to this uh, request bin, which is my destination, but there's a data transformation side. And this one, um, this is the data that you typically would get from IoT Central, and it has a way to transform it, to change it into this type of um, message as an output and you know, using this configuration. Yeah, this is using JQ in order to, to do the transformation from this type of data, it's like in this case the model, into to that. Okay. All right, let's look at some more. So rules, you can actually set up some rules to notify other systems, right? So you can say, okay, if this, you know, if this webhook, so let's say a temperature hits a certain limit at a five minute span, you wanna be notified. So there's a way you can create a rule that can, uh, can tell you what's going on. So think about thousands of devices. I wanna know which devices have some issues. So you can specify the time limit, get the telemetry, uh, set up the operator, you know, you know, in this case, the, I want the temperature, if it's greater than a certain maximum, uh, maximum of 35, once it is more than 35, then I wanted to send it to this webhook, then I can get some notification that some of these devices are failing. REST API, so the good thing about IoT Central, that's why it's an application platform or service, there's REST APIs that you can control some of these comp configurations, the app management side, the device modeling, the onboarding, creating this device management. So it's not just the screens that I showed you, creating jobs, creating uh, you know, these rules. You can automate it using you know, DevOps or you, know, you, can, you can use these REST APIs in order to do your you know, changes to this, this configuration. Of course, there's limitation. You can't just, you know, send data to it. Uh, it's one query API for, uh, I think, one per second. You know, one query API per second or 20 API requests per second. So you can do that in this case. But in order to connect to it, you have to create a token. So you go to API tokens, you create a token. Uh, depending on that role of that token, then you can use it to send uh, commands. Even send, a, in this case, I wanna send a command to my, uh, to my device here from REST API, using a REST API. So let's do a demo there, real quick. So I have this, if you can see this, Okay, so I have um, the URL and the authorization, and I'm gonna do a post, and notice how I'm calling it the API using a device. I specify, this my device is the name of, of this uh, device I have over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a, a REST API call, and then it would go to IoT Central, and then it would connect to this device and it would change the text that is showing over here. So I specify uh, to display this text, which is a command. I said, this is a command, this is the name of that command, and on the request itself, I would say, hello, DevOps, Greece, and see if I can send this request and show of course, this is gonna be interesting. There you go. It did send the API and send it to that device directly. So it's good. It worked. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And of course, it's not just you know IoT. There's also industrial IoT. When you're trying to connect some of these OT devices, you know, the scale of the devices that's already out there, there's a way to send and pipe that data to the IoT cloud. Um, in summary, Internet of Things, two things you have to remember. You are remotely monitoring a device and controlling a device, 
And then IoT Central, it simplifies you know, setting up and uh, doing the IoT solution. And then benefits of IoT Central is, of course, a lot of it is low code development. So, and I did talk about the nine things that you, you need to set up in order to do an IoT solution. Uh, thank you very much. If you want to get the presentation, uh, feel free to use this URL or the QR code. And are there any questions so far? Do we have time for questions? Yes, sir. Just a small part. Uh, if you want to sell, say, to distribute uh, cloud devices, do you have to register each device? Like, you, regist you, can, you have to register these, each one of these devices, right? So there's a bulk way of registering them. So it's, it's how you set up these devices and how it would register. You can, you can pre-register them to your, uh, to, to your system or you can have a third party to set them up and then it would automatically connect. And One more, uh, the, are there any custom templates for unknown uh, devices? Uh, custom templates for some? A lot of the, the plug and play, uh, the certified Azure devices, they have custom templates. Uh, so you can start with that if you want to learn more about it. Cool, it's interesting stuff, right? So call to action, if you want to learn more about this demo, there's a, then Microsoft Learn, uh, there's uh, the REST API uh, and how you would do this, and then of course this device, uh, Expressive, uh, and how you would connect it. There's a tutorial out there if you're interested in going through the, the same steps. I have a question, did you, did you learn something new today that you're not, uh, that you did not know yesterday? It's good? Yes? That's good. So if you're interested in learning more about me, my name is Ron Dagdag. I'm a director of software engineering at Spacey. The best way to contact me is through LinkedIn or uh, through email uh, or Twitter at Ron Dagdag. So feedback is appreciated. Anything you feel free to ask questions. And thank you very much. Have a good conference.